So welcome back F11 members to part 2 of this post-production video tutorial for issue 93 October 2019. So in the first part we started working on this picture here of Weymouth Harbour at sunrise. Quite a tricky image to process. So far what I've done is uh, enhance the tones in various areas of the picture, in the water, in the harbour to the left and in the haze affected area down here as well. Now what we're doing is optimizing the sky and I've just used Lightroom's brush tool to select the sky. Now let's make the adjustments to it. So I click off show selected mask overlay and now what I want to do is pull back highlights. Again do not go too far because if you go all the way you can end up with a muddy looking sky. So I'm going to go to about minus 60 on those highlights there. Uh, I'm also going to go back on my blacks as well, which will put a bit of contrast into the sky there. And I'm going to come back on my exposure and darken it down. And that's quite a transformation, isn't it? I hope you'll agree. Uh, I'm quite pleased with that. And uh, it's now the key question we have to ask is how's the join looking here between the harbour, the tops of the roofs, and the sky? I think actually I've gone a little bit too far on my exposure, so I'm going to pull that back. It's not looking quite realistic enough, so I'm going to pull it back to about minus. 40. I do want the drama of these clouds at the top of the frame, but we'll achieve that with a different method. At the moment, I'm just concerned about the join between the sky and the rooftops and treetops there in the harbour. So that the, the join's looking pretty good. The auto mask's done a really good job on this right-hand part of the frame here. Just down here, though, just along the top of the trees, it's not looking quite realistic. And just over here on these top of these roofs here, there's just a hint of a halo effect there. So what I need to do is just paint, carry on painting with the mask to, uh, the, painting the mask in to take care of that. So first thing I'm going to do is come over here and uh, come down on my flow to 50. That means that that's, that's sort of reducing the amount of red paint that I'm uh, applying to so select the area. It's, uh, it means that I can build up my adjustments with multiple strokes, uh, which is often quite beneficial when you're doing this kind of work. Okay, and uh, I'm going to come right down on my uh, brush size as well. And this time I'm not going to show the mask overlay. I'm just going to do it by eye here and start painting in this kind of area until I can see that I've just darkened down the tops of those trees there or transformed the selection enough so that the horrible halo effect is lessened. And I don't know if you can see this on video, but very, very subtly and very slowly, I'm just fine tuning that selection just along the top of those trees there. Come up on my brush size again. And now I need to do the same over here to the tops of the, just along the top of those roofs there because at the moment I can see just a hint of a halo. We don't want that. Halos are horrible. We're getting there. You can see it start just encroaching on the tops of the roofs there um, but nevertheless I think that's quite subtle. I think that's worked well. Over here, can you see these chimneys here just to look a little unnaturally bright against that bright sky behind them? So I'm just going to darken them down a bit by 
painting in the mask area as well. And the beauty of having this flow set to 50 is that I can build up the adjustment slowly until it looks natural. Just that rooftop on the right there, there just, can you see it's just putting a bit of darkness into there. Good, what do you reckon? Not bad, eh? Um, so next thing to do, uh, click on done. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with that sky. I just want to brighten up this right hand side of this picture. The whites are looking a little bit muddy there, so I'm going to use again, I'm going to use adjustment brush. Again, I'm going to alter the size using uh, my graphics tablet. I'm going to click on show selected mask overlay and then just paint in the area. Ah, come back here, put flow back up to 100 and now paint in the area that I want to select. Okay, so it's all of this. Okay. So that's that area selected. Again, click off show selected mask overlay. And now, Let's have a look, just perk up the whites a little bit. I can't go too far else I'll blow highlights, but, and then come up on my uh, exposure a touch. Not too far, always keep it subtle. Just a hint really. Very, very subtle adjustments, but they all build up. They're, you know, this is what it's all about. Click on done. We're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, it's a strong picture. I'm pleased with it. I think uh, we'll bring out the best of the picture. Yeah, we have some burnt highlights here, but that's where the sun's coming up. It's to be expected. Um, I, I really don't like those pictures where you see a, a deep orange ball here and then shadow in the darkest, sorry, detail in the darkest shadows here. It's just not natural. It just doesn't look natural. Okay, so uh, next thing to do is uh, I'm just going to use the grad tool now. Hold down the shift key to make sure it's being applied level and bring it down just to about, I don't want it affecting, I just want it affecting the top of the sky really here. And uh, now I'm just going to pull back my blacks there a touch and just put in a bit of drama into the top of the sky. Let's have a nice soft grad and a bit, just a teaspoonful on the exposure. That's done. All that's left really now with this picture is just to deal with this little bit down the bottom of the edge, the frame which is encroaching in my frame which I find distracting. I would normally do this in Photoshop but Lightroom has a spot re removal function. And um, what you do is, uh, first of all, you select your size of your brush, and then you just select the area to be corrected. And then you can, basically it's a clone tool, and you can just select the area that it's sampling from uh, and Just want to get some believable looking correction down there. And I think that's it. Let's wait for it to catch up there. I've gone too I'm gonna just come back on that. Getting in a right mess here. I've done a lot to this image, so. Let's come back on it. Well, just pause you while my computer catches up with me. So that's it. I've dealt with that little uh, incursion down the bottom of the frame. Click on done there. Last thing to do is just tweak vibrance. I'm just going to put in a bit more, a kind of a half a tablespoonful, I'd say. And uh, there we are. 
I'm pleased with this picture and what's more I think it's been subtly po uh, processed. It looks believable. I hope you'll agree with me there. Uh, and if you think of all the things we did to this image, let's just go back and look at the before and after again. If I hit tab on my keyboard, I can get rid of my side panel so we can see it bigger. And you can see there's quite a difference, isn't it? Just look at the detail here in this area of the picture, that lovely blue building on the wharf there, on the historic wharf of Weymouth. By the way, there's a great place to buy seafood just out the frame on the left there if you're in the area. Uh, and look and compare that with the, sorry, with that area of the image there. And also on the right there, compare it here to there. And in particular, down the harbour, we've dealt with some of that ugly flare uh, and enhanced the reflections and the strong shapes of the ripples in the water, just brightened up the boat a bit, and of course, maximized the impact in the sky. And there's one aspect of this picture that I absolutely love, which I only saw later, I have to admit. Can you see this cloud here in the sky? It's like an arrow, isn't it? It's a right hand <laughs> turn right indicator in the sky. Uh, all sorts of things could be read into that, of course, in these times. But let's not go there. Uh, thanks for uh, your attention. I hope that was useful. And as always, we'd love to hear you with suggestions for future post-production tutorials and indeed any other features as well. Keep exposing.